Hey there, it's hot outside. How hot is it? I don't know, like 90 or something? Wow, that's so hot. Whatever will I, time for the top six indie games of the summer. Volume two. Mm, I guess Todd's here too. So the summer's come and gone, and once again, indie games have swarmed the market. Hundreds of games have come out this season, so we made sure to play only a few of them. Without wasting any more time, here are our picks for the top six indie games that came out this summer. First up on our list is The Road Not Taken by indie developer Spry Fox. Probably most famous for their mobile and PC game Triple Town, Spry Fox made the jump to the console with this one, specifically the PlayStation 4 as a free PS Plus title. You control the unnamed ranger as you find yourself drunkenly stumbling through the forest during wintertime. Eventually, you wind up taking refuge in a town where the mayor places upon you the duty of rescuing children from the forest. It's a quick and simple prelude that only serves to build up suspense for the player. Though one wonders on the intellect of a mayor who entrusts saving children to some random, cloaked, mute stranger that, oh yeah, by the way, can magically float people. Right, an ability you'll use to get your match 3 on. Road Not Taken is a hybrid match 3 and roguelike puzzle game, which is fancy pantsy, but it's also a dating simulator. Yep, that's right, you can get married. But why? Who would marry this thing? I mean... Oh, there are just so many questions. Well, Mr. Questions, it's because this game is all about forming your own story. Each year that passes counts as a level, and each level gives you a set amount of children to rescue. However, once you reach half of them, you aren't obligated to finish. Because of this, certain villagers may change how they feel about you. Oh, that's a little, that's a little fucked up, man. Going back to making your own story, you're gonna die in this game. Probably a ton. The ranger carries around a flame with them at all times, which gradually depletes depending on how you solve each puzzle, and once you hit zero, you're dead. From there, it's back to day two to start it all over again. Certain things will carry over though, such as your relationships with other people and your combination journal. This game continues to make little sense, but I'll forgive it because it's adorable. Oh totally, I love this art style. Everything's so simple and has this pastel kind of look to it. It retains the charm while still having a bit of a haunting feeling. I've yet to make it all the way through a campaign yet, but I've really enjoyed my time spent with Road Not Taken. On the premise of Promise alone, it makes it on the list. So what happens when you combine a roguelike with a rhythm game? You get Crypt of the Necrodancer. While they're both roguelikes, Crypt of the Necrodancer and Road Not Taken couldn't be more rogue-unlike. <laughs> By all means, this shouldn't work. With your typical roguelike game, one needs plenty of time to plan and strategize their next move. On the flip side, with rhythm games, you have to keep your mind and body moving full speed ahead. But they managed to make it work with some ridiculous plot shenanigans. I'll keep it simple. The protagonist, Cadence, has been cursed with a plot device that makes her heart pound continuously to the beat of Danny Baranowski's dance-tastic soundtrack. Her condition? Critical. Her diagnosis? All kinds of dungeon crawling or bouncing, as the case may be. Take the advanced concept of a rogue-style game such as Dungeons of the Dreadmore and dumb it down till it can't be any dumber. That sounds like a bit of a risky move, but developer Ryan Clark of Brave Yourself Games pulled it off. You make your way through this dungeon one tile at a time, one beat at a time. All of the enemies are also tied to the beat, so you're able to plan your movements accordingly. See that massive dragon coming your way? Well, it's not too bad as long as you can figure out his pattern. Of course, getting that familiarity takes time, so good luck not panicking a bunch at first. Speaking of which, there is a bit of luck involved with drops and spawns, but once you get the hang of the mechanics and enemy types, things will start to flow with the beat. You'll be thrown new mob types with different patterns at a pretty regular rate, so things never get too easy. Each weapon type has some unique quality or attack pattern, which makes learning it much more engaging than just, oh wow, this spear is way pokier than the dagger. You may want a spear, you may want a broadsword, neither is ostensibly better than the other. Ostensib- what? What? Necrodancer is still in early access, and I'm excited to see more of what Ryan Clark has to offer. For the simple feat of syncing rhythmic gameplay with the roguelike framework, Necrodancer firmly established its moves as a groove-tastic hybrid. Have you heard of Iron Fisticle? I haven't either. Then why is it on the list? Well, because it's really good. So you have heard of it, hmm? Okay, Austin, don't make me give you a fucking beatdown. 
Iron Fisticle is the best damn Smash TV clone you've never heard of, and it kinda came out with no fanfare, at least I didn't see any. The name Curb Studios may not sound familiar as they're a new studio, but these two guys are responsible for games like Stealth Bastard, Gravity Crash, and Aqua Kitty Mind Defender. Did those not get fanfare either? Maybe these guys just don't like trumpets and shit. I'm more a violins guy anyway. I do it old school, much like Iron Fisticle. It's definitely old school inspired and instantly reminiscent of games like the aforementioned Smash TV and Robotron, but with our futuristic dual stick shooter controls. You assume the role of some unnamed knight who gets sucked into an alternate dimension. Classic, baby. You are immediately thrust into the game. No bullshit or filler, just gameplay. Kill the goblins, kill the bats, kill the Frankenstein looking things, kill everything, do your taxes, kill some more. Fun fact, Smash TV is the first game I ever played, which is totally appropriate, and I've always wanted another one, but it's rare a games even come close to replicating its feeling. Sure, there's no story, no crazy new tech that psychologically analyzes your fears and replicates them or some shit, but for a tiny little game, it is incredibly polished. Polish is right. Todd and I have been fighting back and forth for the highest score for the past few days now, and nothing seems to be stopping us anytime soon. If there were little hiccups here and there, they could slow us down, but the game is as smooth and no-nonsense as possible. There's a sense of progression that requires a mix of skill and time to attain. When you reach in-game shops, you can purchase temporary stat upgrades or spend a bit more to get permanent stat increases which apply themselves every time you restart. This way, you can get a bit of a head start on your next life. Eventually though, you'll max out and then the real high score war can begin. My only slight complaints with Iron Fisticle are the lack of online co-op and the short length of the game. Local co-op's a blast that introduces a few new elements to the mix, but being able to play together with Todd would have been fucking great. Regardless of that, this is a hell of a good time and you should go get it. Go on now. Don't you want them big money, big prizes? I love it. <laughs> So by this point, you've already heard everything there is to hear about Shovel Knight, so what's there to say really? They've heard everything, all the words. There's nothing you could possibly offer to give some sort of explanation as to why this game is here at this level on the pick. Look, it's, it's number fucking three. It's number three! It's better than not only three games before it, but like all the other games that came out on Steam. So there's gotta be some fucking words you can choose to explain why this game is here, why it's so good. Is it the controls? Is it the NES nostalgia? Is it the soundtrack? Is it all the amazing bosses and their specifically thematically sound designs which give you this very thorough impression that the game is in fact an adventure? I should fucking hope it's one of those things, if not all of them. Jesus. Shovel Knight was pretty good. Next. So we couldn't come to an agreement on number two, so here's two more games. Wouldn't that technically make this the top seven? No. Velocity 2X is the sequel to the totally overlooked Velocity Ultra for the PS4 and Vita. It's a hybrid between a shoot-em-up and a puzzle platformer that's fun as hell. Oh, I should probably mention that it is one hell of a sequel. New to 2X are the platforming segments, which work very well in conjunction with the top-down shooter parts. In order to progress past certain gates, you'll need to hop out of the ship and figure things out on foot. While it completely changes up the control scheme, it still feels very natural and gives the player twice the game to play. Everything in Velocity requires speed and precision. While you're shooting baddies, rescuing civilians, teleporting all over the place, opening gates, and figuring out puzzles, you're also racing against the clock. Each mission lasts just a couple of minutes, but those are minutes that you need to spend on the top of your game if you want to get the high scores and the gold medals. It's absolutely worth a shot, so get on it! Super Time Force is an irreverent side-scrolling shooter which makes a rather glorious mockery of time manipulation. It hardly takes it serious and bends the concept of time travel to suit its gameplay needs rather than adhering to how we imagine time travel works. Granted, it's not a fucking real thing anyway, so it might as well be a fun gameplay mechanic. You'll be traveling to different time periods, such as the 1980s when robots were attacking Philadelphia, or the 1990s where everything went all road warrior and shit. Ah, oh, the 90s. Definitely the best time period I remember. There are tons of characters to choose from, each of which has a unique basic and charge attack. They're each fairly simple, fairly limited, but the depth comes from combining their abilities, which you do by dying. A lot. It's a long fucking story, so to put it simply, anything that happens in a level will always happen. You can only change whether or not it could have happened. 
By doing this, you can save your dead friends, rewind to attempt entire levels again, or beat bosses in just 5 seconds. And if that's not intriguing enough, here's a raptor on a skateboard shooting acid. Kookabunga! Okay, we're about to sit down and tell you about the greatest indie game, maybe even game, of the entire summer. I'm not about to sit down. I don't need you to speak for me, Austin. Lethal League is a sophomore effort from Reptile Games and also one hell of a competitive game. You can play it sitting down like Austin or standing up like myself. It's that good. Shut up. Here's the basic concept. Take Super Smash Brothers, add Pong and Jet Set Radio. Now divide that by PC exclusive, multiply that with online gameplay, and you get... Some incredibly pissed off math professors. And I guess Lethal League. The idea alone is like something straight out of my dreams. It's a 2D fighter where all of the playable characters are in a cage match of baseball which perpetually speeds up. The only way to knock out another player is by hitting them with that ball, so as you'd assume, chaos ensues. You'll get to a point playing against your friends where the ball's going hundreds of thousands of miles per hour. That right there is when the group screaming and excitement really begins. Reptile Games has found a way to embody the concept of hype and sell it directly to consumers in the form of hitting your friends with balls so hard they lose their color and are jettisoned into space. Each of the five playable characters has a different special ability that will completely change the flow of each burst. Latch can swallow the ball and then release it in any direction, while Candyman's ability will make the ball temporarily break the laws of physics going through walls. I'm not sure that that's breaking the laws of physics. Physicists just haven't tried hard enough yet. They're probably too busy playing Playing Lethal League. The game is so simple I'd absolutely believe that. It's very approachable, yes, but pulls no punches competitively. Even when you decide to take it a step further to learn deeper mechanics, they end up being very easy to pull off. More so than abusing the system, it's up to the player to mind game their opponents into submission. Let's take a normal match between Todd and I, for example. Todd is typically a very defensive player and much more versed in the mechanics. As I attempt to slam this ball down in his face, he's going to tie him a charge hit to make me regret existing. And that's a thing that he can accomplish on a regular basis. Right, and Austin is a very in-your-face type of player who bunts at literally every waking moment. To respond to that, I rarely run up to him or hit balls directly at him if I can avoid it. But if he mixes it up, then I'm the one angstily contemplating what I'm doing on this planet. Now we may not agree on everything, but we do agree that Lethal League is the finest indie game to come out this summer. And I hope that you'll all agree with us and pick it up because it's one hell of a game, completely deserving of the number one slot. Batter up. <laughs> okay, we're done. Keep your eye on the ball. Stop, Todd. Who's on first? There aren't even bases in this game, come on. Let's make a racist team name and then pretend it's not racist. Okay, Todd. Well, that was our list. I hope you guys had a great time. I know I did. Here, man. Well, that's comedy. What? What the? What the fuck? What is going? Am I? Am I on? A, am I on a green screen right now? Am I not at your? Am I not at your house? Hello. Hey, hey, guys! Thanks for watching. Did you agree with our list? Do you think we're scrub lords for missing a certain game? Let me know in the comments section so I can check out some suggestions and feel generally terrible about myself. Also, Todd's pretty cool, right? Check out his channel, Rated S Games, as he also has a video coming out today. He's one sexy man. I hope y'all had fun. Catch you again soon. Bye. Time for the top six indie games of the summer. Don't pick that one.